the gated community, like they keep the wall to keep the Mexicans out. The, you know, you gated community keep Mexicans. No, it's crazy because gated communities aren't to keep Mexicans out. If you live in a gated community, you probably gave your gate code to a hundred different Mexicans. You get your plumber, you got your yard guy, you probably got some guy doing some other kind of work, you probably have some cleaning lady, you know what I mean? The wall is to keep out white people, white meth addicts. Get some traction, but rain comes in laxing. But you see, I'm maxing capacity. I'm an inacity. I'm on a chastity. I'm called inacity. I don't know how to be, but I know I can be. But you know you wanna be, and I don't ever wanna be the wanna be. They say they can and never be, and I say it's an edible. You, you say it's inevitable, and I say it's an edible. And you took too many edibles, and I don't know it's credible. The feelings I'm terrible, and I see you singing, and I am a leaning, and I am remembering everything I'm singing, and I. Woo woo, man, I shall we wait these times out. And then the weather we just had is all about. We just had a hailstorm, and I like the hailstorm. I'm about to show you that and it's really crazy. It's been wild out there. That's a hailstorm for you. And I'm gonna keep it going. Even though everybody is going, I'm in going, 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 going. So, if you don't know, now you know. I am Ruben, your host here at Lion and the Truth in Legends Podcasting's studio. Coming back in, fuck Union Bank. Um, I do have a critique of another company um, starting off on a downfall and going up. We'll see if I get there because there's so much. I got uh, the list of so much stuff going on. Um, I was hoping to be an update of, you know, how well I did on the Legion of Skanks of Battle of the Badass Bands. But apparently, um, there had to be a, like a long bio. Did not write that. Um, I'm just like, dude, here's some music. Check it out. I just, I just lack, me personally, I lack the, um, like when I, I paint, like I do paintings. Um, people always want to know what the name of the painting was. I'm all, Name? Didn't name? It's hard to name songs. Like when I name a, a song, it's like, okay, what word did I say like 10 times? Okay, there. The. This one's called The. Fuck. It's called The. You know? But. It's crazy. Anyways, like I was saying. I checked out this business. It was pretty cool. At the end of the day, at the beginning, it didn't go so well. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to keep this going on. Um, I read a story yesterday about Fireball. You know, Fireball's fake. Fa the, no, sorry. If you get a thing of Fireball, like a big old thing of Fireball, that, that's real Fireball. You know, that's not the fake stuff. But if you go to, like, um, say you're at... Uh, 
um, a gas station like a Seven Eleven where they don't have hard liquor. They only have a uh, um, what you call it. They have the uh, the uh, beers and stuff like that. They can't have malt liquor, but they can't have um, hard liquor. They have little things next to the you can't register their Fireball. They say Fireball, but they're not really Fireball. It's actually just malt liquor. So they're getting sued right now because people actually thought, man, I thought I was getting drunk off some whiskey, but that shit was not, it's not whiskey. It's malt liquor, you know, they're getting tricked. Remember people used to hand that shit out all the time. People like, boom, boom. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's a whiskey. If it was malt liquor, like, no wonder I don't feel good. Or give me fucking a beer, bro. A little, a little miniature, like beer. I don't want no cinnamon beer. Some trashy ass cinnamon beer. Man, so much stuff going on. So much stuff going on. Um, Matt, stuff going on. Um, I released two albums. Um, I tried to release them last month, but it took so ever for long. And Friday, I think it finally came out. So I have two albums under Three Chord Symphony. Go ahead and check that out. If you can, go ahead and let that loop. Turn the volume down. Ain't doing shit. Turn the volume down while you're at, you know, at home and just let the records play. Please, please help out a brother. Anyways, um, let me talk about... <laughs> Um, Santos, you know that guy Santos, the guy lied. They found out he's like in drag. Are we going to have a Santos versus the Proud Boys? Because the Proud Boys have been going to all these drag, you know, readings where people are reading the kids. Well, Santos, he made, this drag queen made himself inside the, the White House. Are they going to protest him? I'm waiting for it. Protest. Santos versus the Proud Boys. Who's going to win? Nobody. Nobody wins that at all. We're all losers there. Um, it's like the balloon. They sell the, there's a Chinese weather balloon, you know? It's probably, they say it's weather balloon, you know, the far right would think it's fucking it's a Chinese spy balloon, but when Trump was president, two of them flew over the United States and they claimed that they were weather balloons so they did nothing to them and did not even talk about them on Fox News. But now that Biden's president and the same exact thing flew over the um, United States, we said, you know, fuck this shit. We're just going to shoot that shit down. But Biden's weak, but I guess. But Trump, you know, he let two of them fly over, you know, because that's what tough guys do. You know, he was like, my balloon, my balloon flew over. I'm this, that's okay. But, you know, then again, Trump had a really good ties with China. China. Remember his daughter got all those pipe patents from China. Ch -ch 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 China, Ch -ch -ch China. Man, we're going through shit. Oh, man. I was listening to a, um, listen to a, a podcast, and they were talking about uh, it, were, it was hypothetical, sarcastic. They were saying that um, it was from this website that blacks are more aggressive than white people. You know, when I analyze, and I'm, you know. I don't believe anything, so I was like, what the fuck, how's that, is that true? I was like, well, I guess they play, they play football, football's pretty aggressive, that's pretty much dominated by black people, but, I started thinking about it, white people are way more aggressive than black people, and I use sports as an example, when it comes to a sport that has been now dominated by the blacks, basketball, football, in basketball, if you touch the guy, it's a foul. You touch him in the wrist, it's a foul. If your arm is bent, it's not a foul. If you straighten out your arm, foul. If you touch him in the hip, foul. If you get in his way, it's a foul. If you stand where he's going to land after he's jumping, that's a foul. Football. If you touch him after five yards, that's passing interference. You put your hands to the face, that's illegal hands to the face. You grab his face mask, that's face mask. You grab him in the back of the shirt, that's a horse collar. They don't like you to touch him at all. If two people touch a guy high and low, that's too much touching for one guy. That's a penalty too. But then like a, a still dominated white sport like hockey, you can just fucking punch the shit out of each other. And you just get two minutes, come back in. And then they go back out there, ding, 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 punch the shit out of each other again. Punch, 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 punch. They got checking. They can do whatever they want. They're not a little penalty, but they, it's not that long. Come back in. But fighting is part of it. Even like UFC and MMA shit, you know, dominated by white people. Granted, the champions are all the people from Nigeria, you know, 
or Brazil, but there's a lot of white people in there. They love to hug, hugging each other, touch each other, punch each other in the face. A lot of interaction. Very aggressive. Basketball is more finesse to kind of stay away from each other. You know? Five people. Even like dancing. Back in the day, they had salsas and tango and, you know, square dancing. You know? Ballroom dancing. Two people close to each other. And then the black people came and they invented all this hip hop dancing. And it's like just one guy and they don't touch each other anymore. And just solo dancing. The last time two black people touched each other when they were dancing was kid and play. And they were just like kicking feet. Man, they're just boom. Now they're just pop locking and not touch each other. They're doing all separate dances. They're not into being aggressive. They're, they're nice people. Very nice people. Very artistic. I would say the white people are slightly more aggressive. You know, with tiki torches and stuff like that. You know, just just my point of view. And then I was thinking even like music, you know, because I'm big into music. And, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and Beatles, you know, with a bunch of bands, you know, bass player, two guitar players, keyboard player, drummer. And then the black people were like, man, I'd love to have a band. But that's just way too many people for me. I'm just going to be me and this dude in this turntable that's good enough two people and you know how about me and a microphone and you just push play on the record player i just too much people and then even you know the black people white you know had their dance and they're dominating the world and the white people were like screw this and they're like we're gonna invent mosh pitting slam dancing we're gonna bring that back and start touching each other again these people are trying not to touch each other and we're trying to touch each other that's just what I was just came up to. I was just, I'm just analyzing stuff. Seems like, I don't know. You know, when when someone says something like, you know, they said black people were aggressive. I'm like, let me analyze this, and then I, then I analyze. I'm like, that's bullshit. I don't agree with none of that. You can't just tell me anything. I'll hear it, and and I'll be like, okay, and because. You know why I can't believe stuff people say is because I've repeated things people said and been wrong in the wrong situation and then just thought like, I never looked that up. They said something and uh, I never even looked it up. I was like, oh, okay, I'll buy that, right? It was just astonishing sometimes, you know. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do whatever this. Just didn't even look it up. Like when I was a kid, I used to have these books. I talk about this all the time. Truly tasteless jokes. I got to buy these books again. I'm pretty sure they're on Amazon. But there was like volume one through 20. And it was just racist jokes and misogynist jokes, sexist jokes. <clears throat> the title said it all. T truly tasteless jokes typically as short as possible sometimes you know a little bit of paragraphs you know all the typical jokes you know um and then uh i can't even think of one that i would actually say on here so i can keep doing this <laughs> but anyways they would mention a lot of things that i've never met before um uh jewish people i never met a jew and still to this day like i probably never had a conversation with a sick jew um i work with people who are jewish you know what i mean not not jewish but actual jewish people but like they're not deep into jewism you know maybe they are but it's like it's not you know so it's like all the jokes don't really pertain to uh anything in real life they're just like uh total stereotypes and falsehoods um, maybe some, you know, might be slightly true. That's why they're humorous. But since I don't meet those people where I'm at, I'm in my own little echo chamber. Um, it's like the boogeyman, you know? So there's a lot of people, Puerto Ricans. You know what I mean? They always talk about the people on the East Coast talk about Puerto Ricans. I don't know if they're a Puerto Rican or a half a Rican, but over here, this guy's Mexican. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a quarter Mexican. I'm not a Puerto Rican, but I'm a quarter Mexican. You over there, you're Puerto Rican. I'm Quarter, quarter Mexican, so I don't know what you're doing, you know. But I said it's crazy. They say, like, like I said, I, I I heard all these jokes, and then today on the news all the time they they do the same thing, and I realized the jokes would work. I still thought they were funny, and I kept buying the books 
because like an invincible boogeyman it didn't mean there was no one to hurt and didn't mean anything at the time you know what i mean and then so fox news they do the same thing like these are uh, the same boogeyman you know what i mean and then like, you see these groups that say that jews will not replace us and i'm at work i'm like they're not gonna replace us yeah there's uh, they didn't even showing up i never met one how are they gonna replace me if they didn't even showing up they're not even here they're not even here we can't replace us unless they're brown skin and name Jesus. And then I think they got it. Like they might, they might have replaced us, but I've never seen them before. I mean, I never, all these stereotypes, I, maybe I just meet people. Maybe in other locations, people are stuck on these identities. If I say identity is bad, people just, and then I like today, Mental illness and mental health and mental wellness is a big important thing. And I think a lot of that ties to identity, lack of identity, um, trying to find their identity. And if people just have this false identity and they don't know who they are, so they feel incomplete. Or they also are unable to complete being the identity because that's not who they are. And they end up crying at 52 years old. You know, should have been honest, bitches. I mean, you gotta be honest. You hear all kinds of dumb things. Like I saw the video. First of all, like Fox News, especially pushing Boogeyman. They're like, wait, wait until we see the Nancy Pelosi video of her husband getting attacked. I bet he was trying to have gay sex with that man. I heard he was a gay lover. Wait till the video. Why are they hiding the video? It was like, well, like. Please have it, and then well, none of your fucking business, Fox News. Like, what is going on? The dude took a hammer to the head. Like, a, a 97-century-year-old man took a hammer to the head by a delusional chubby man. You know what I mean? It looked like it could have been the son of Alex Jones. You know, it was like Sean Hannity and Alex Jones had a baby. It was this dude, you know? They always talk about, this. they say this stuff all the time, whoa. We want to build a wall, but they build walls and they, and around their neighborhood. They live in a gated communities. Well, guess what? That dude came right up and he was like, I'm here, you know, and he wasn't no, you know, American ninja. He wasn't special and he, somehow he might have just took a golf cart. He just went over there and he made his way over there with a hammer, you know. Tucked it in and said, hey, I, uh, I'm going to do some handiwork at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Mr. Pelosi's house. Oh, no response. Don't worry. I know him personally. And Fox News says we're gay lovers. That story hasn't even came out yet. It will, though. But anyways, so all that fucking stupid shit. So anyways, walls don't work. That dude's at Nancy Pelosi's house. Nickety knock. Breaks in. Paul Pelosi's. He's out on fucking ambient, not waking up. He wakes up over Paul Pelosi's like they get a breast rape him and Paul Pelosi's like oh oh my god what's going on Bill Bill back up Bill Mr. Clinton I don't want any more and he's like no where's Nancy he's like oh is, he's I think it's either at um you know Epstein's Island or you know back sucking baby blood I don't know in Washington he's like I'm gonna wait here Paul Pelosi so see the video of the dude breaking in you know, then the 911 call, they're like, we don't know about the 911. It's a, somehow, Paul Pelosi's old man was able to call 911, probably because the alarm was going off, and, and then it said 911, and then he was there, and he was like, uh, do we need to send the cops? And the guy with the hammer's like, no, no cops, don't send the cops. And he's like, um, no, is the Capitol Police, is the Capitol Police around though? Just wonder if there's any Capitol Police. I'm looking out for you, bro. Is the Capitol Police around? Like, um, we don't know. This not that's the wrong number. Yeah, this is the wrong number for the Capitol. We're I'm at I'm at an office. What are you doing, bro? And uh, she wasn't catching on to say like, send fucking help. He's all uh, here. I got a guy here. Um, he's above me. He told me I probably should get off the phone now. Um, said something about what? He said, hammer hit me head. 
okay, yeah, probably should have the cops on. No, don't, don't, he said, don't send the cops aggressively or it might hurt me, okay? So, okay, I gotta go. Hang the phone up. And then finally, send the cops up. Cops show up, do with the hammer, and what we'll hammer in one hand, got Paul Pelosi in the other hand, and then he comes across like fucking side of hatchet guy over in Fresno on Paul Pelosi's head, pickety pow, pow. It was quite aggressive. We know, point of making walls don't work. And also, hammers are very scary. And if you saw a guy walking down the street with a hammer, you would definitely call the cops. The cops would definitely pull that guy over. Be like, dude, why do you have a hammer? Like, well, I have the right Second Amendment to carry a hammer. Like, well, you look kind of crazy. What are you coming after me for? Look, me crazy? It's not nor- unnormal for me to. I can carry a hammer. Crazy. Gay community. That's funny because, like, people in the gay community, like, they keep the wall to keep the Mexicans out. You know, you gay community keep the Mexicans. No. It's crazy because gay communities aren't to keep Mexicans out. If you live in a gated community, you probably gave your gate code to a hundred different Mexicans. You get your plumber, you got your yard guy, you probably got some guy doing some other kind of work, you probably have some cleaning lady, you know what I mean? The wall is to keep out white people, white meth addicts. There's there's different kind of drug addicts in, in life, you know? As far as I know... When I see on TV, black drug addicts, when people are on drugs that are black, they just tend to walk around close to an intersection, the street. They're always missing at least two pieces of clothing. The shirt is stretched out as long as can be if that's the piece of clothing that they do have. If they come up to you, they need a few things. And they usually need it right quick. Hey, man, you got you got like a dollar right quick? Can I borrow your VCR right quick? Hey, why are you being a jerk, dog? Hey, man, can I suck your dick right quick? That was into uh, 21st minute, so I should beat the algorithm there. How about that? I have, I, I've been told to uh, stop using cuss words within the first five minutes of my video. <laughs> Woo, I hit that like first five seconds. I didn't do it this time, though. How about that? I'm probably, maybe I should go back and edit some stuff. I never do that. I just need help, maybe. I need help. <laughs> but back to what I was saying, the black drug addicts just walk around. They ain't doing wrong. White drug addicts. And I know this. White drug addicts. They break into your house and backyard in your car. They check door handles to see if your car doors open. They look in the back of your truck or your car. They steal your shit. They steal your shit. And they take it home and they dismantle it and they find shit that's recyclable. Recycle shit to buy some more shit they can get high on. The shit they have left over, they use that and invent some shit to make a laser to try to stop the voices in their head. If you've ever met Somebody who's a functional meth addict. And me in Fresno, I've met quite a few. I used to have this band practice back in the day. Functional meth addicts. Until, obviously, they died. And anyways, um, he had like an underground pit. He dug underneath his house. A basement. By hand. And then he put like a magnetic device in his wall where you touch places. Beep, 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 beep. And a door would open. And that's how you got down to the basement. And then we had a special band room with special walls too. The whole thing was like meth central. It was built by a meth addict. The walls to keep that motherfucker out because he's going to come steal your shit. He's going to check your car. Rattle your handles. going to go into your garbage. You're going to find paperwork. No, who's not stealing your ID and your identity? Black drug addicts. Know who's stealing your ID and your identity? White drug addicts. 
white drug. That's who's doing a white drug addicts. The wall is for that people, not Mexicans. White drug addicts. If you get if you get the point, what else can I add to this advent? Well, let's see here. I'm at 24 minutes here. I can give a little more. Um, I had a little situation. Um, so I won't talk about work situation. There was some fighting the other day. It was crazy. Um, anyways, um, I went to one of our local stores here called Artistry, right? And uh, you can get online and order stuff, right? So I got online and I saw what they had in stock. I ordered item A. And item B. Sent the order. They sent me a text saying, got your order received. Sent me a confirmation order saying, your order has been prepared and ready to go. Ready to go. Hell yeah. Ready to go. Man, I don't look good at all. Anyways, so later that day, I went to the store, Artistry, and went to get my product. And I didn't have item A, but I had three of item B. Remember I said I ordered one of item A and one of item B. But somehow, opened up, I have three of item B. So, not even close to my order. One too many. And I was like, uh, what's going on here? You give me uh, three of one. I, that's not what I ordered. Like, yeah. It says right here you ordered this and you see on the package slip it said they packaged the right stuff and then they repackaged it two hours later and i was like um no uh, that's not what i ordered at all and i'm like it's like well oh yeah we're out of that i'm like okay well still i only ordered two items why would you give me three items you know i mean are you saying that because you didn't have that you're throwing something in for free it's like nope i'll fix it um, uh, so you don't have the stuff I wanted. You guys said I had it. What happened? She said, no, we ran out of it. I'm like, no, but you had it in stock. I ordered it. I ordered it. I, it reminded me of like the, um, the Jerry Seinfeld episode. You, uh, you took the reservation. You just don't have to keep the reservation. Did I already talk about this yet? I'm continuing. Anyway, I'm saying it again. So. I'm like getting kind of upset. Oh, well, let me talk to your manager. What's going on here? Manager comes over. I'm like, hey, I you know, he'll explain it to him. I ordered A and B. You gave me three of item B. What's going on here? I said, oh, yeah, we're out of that. I'm like, but I ordered it to save it. It's like, yeah, but we we ran out. Let the must. I'm like, no, 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 no. I. I like a bait and switch. I already got the stuff. And so I was kind of upset. I'm like, what, whatever. I'm just going to take two of these. And before I got that, I had two of these. And then she, the guy said, okay, no problem. He went back there. And then the girl came over while the guy was redoing my order. He And she said, um, did he explain it to you so you can understand? And I was like, what, bitch? What, bitch? What, bitch? What, bitch? If you don't know. I was like, what? I was like, not. I was like, so I said, excuse me? Um, you don't gaslight me. Okay, first of all, I'm being pretty cool about this. You guys are in the wrong. Uh, don't come over here and give me attitude. You know I mean, so I'm going to step aside right now and let you help someone else until my order is ready. So I don't have this conversation with you. Step aside. The guy comes over, buy my shit, and I leave. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> it might have been the next day or maybe two days later. Um, there's another great order stock I ordered. Um, once again, item 1A and item B, I show up and they have nothing for me. I said, hey, where's my my item? They said, oh, we ran out. I said, no, 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 I um, I ordered it, saved it. It's like, yeah, we ran out though. Like, no, no, this happened yesterday. Like, what the fuck? Can't, like, no, I, I, 
I saved this. What the fuck is going on? And the guy behind the counter is acting like a dick. I'm like, nope, that's it. I'm fucking pissed. I'm out of here. Going to do what I do and relieve reviews and email and shit. So I left some reviews. I email. got on Twitter. I find a fucking owner of this place. I go to their website. Uh, the products that I had, I left reviews on. Some stuff was pretty good. But I had to say, look, if you order there, they're going to swap your shit out. They're going to take your stuff. They know what the good deals and the good discounts are. They're gonna, you're not going to get what you want. They're going to take advantage. You're going to bait and switch. Next day, I get a phone call, email, text. Please, Mr. Sazer, may I talk to you? So sure enough, Bobby from Artistry calls me. Very polite, very um, very professional, very courtesy. And then like from the get-go, uh, started all the conversation. Mr. Sadler, how can we resolve this this way? I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Instead of, usually a lot of people have attitude. You know, they, and then... A lot of the there's like a lot of ego thing. There's not ego, there's no power trip. There's no winner, no hierarchy and shit. There's like, hey, we're having a conversation. It's you and me. It's not he's above me, I'm above him. I mean, it's just a situation. So I explained to him. He said, yes. What happens is when you place your order, and if you say you're not going to pick it up until seven, hypothetically, they'll give it away to someone who orders after you, who says they'll pick it up at one. So you could order your stuff at 6 a.m. in the morning and say, hey, look, I'm at work, but I want to get back in town. I'm going to pick it up at 7. Save it, please. And someone else can call in at noon, say, I'll be in an hour, and take your shit. Right out of your bag. Whoop. Gone. Whoop. Gone. Whoop, whoop. And you show up. Long day of work. You're like, what the fuck? fuck happened to my a and b product like we gave it to that dude who uh didn't have a job and showed up at noon whoop i'm like what the whoop i'm like whoop whoop so bobby was like yeah i apologize this is how our system works and how we do things you know i'm like that's fucking jacked bro because a lot of people are just being honest but like yeah i'm not gonna be here till now so if you don't want to you know Please save the product for me. Take it off the stock. You're like anywhere else. You buy a shirt. And say I'll come pick it up. And you show up like, nah, someone just showed up and picked it up already. But nah, I did curbside. But yeah, 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 yeah. But someone came curbside earlier. But, but, but I, huh? What the fuck? So. Bobby said, check us out, Rube. We apologize. And next time you place an order, let me start it off by saying, you are correct. That's exactly how the system works. And we know it's not correct. So, made me first of all feel comfortable being like yeah i know i'm right so that's what they do they give your shit away it's like that's fucked up and he said let me make it up to you and i told him usually what i go there to shop for and he said look we probably have a couple other products a b and c let me give you the best a b and c that i could find and really make it up and say i'm sorry man i'm terrible in this thing huh well And uh, so I waited a couple of days until I actually had to go over there and just normally and shop. So I went over there and shopped. And then um, <clears throat> the lady who gaslighted me got my order. And I was like, oh, shit. Shit's about to go down. And she punches it up. Doo, 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 and she looks at me. And she's like, oh, fuck. There's that dickhead who just got me in trouble. So she goes and talks to the manager. And the manager goes, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Ruben. It's this professional-looking lady. Got cool-looking hair, cool-looking style. Looks over at me. Directly like she knew who I was, expecting me. Here's a picture of Ruben. She's like, oh, yeah, Ruben. Come here. Let me help you over here. Pulls me aside. How you doing today? I'm like, oh, great, great. 
great. How, how, how are you doing? How are you doing? It's like, oh, great. We got you. Um, oh, yeah, Bobby said we got the three things. Hey, sorry about what happened before. You know, we really want to take care of you. It's, you know, it's a little mix up. But, uh, yeah, Bobby said he's got some real good stuff for you. So here we go. And I was like, what, what? And they gave me what I needed. And maybe later I'll do a review on this stuff. I'll probably definitely go to the website and leave a review on their website of the products that Bobby gave me. But Bobby picked out awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. I was very happy with what Bobby picked out and um, made me continuously go there. Right? Like, I think I've been there. And also, like I said, that was one of the situation. I wanted to still place an order at that place and go back there and see if if I did put the earlier order, which I did, and it and it was there, and sure enough, it was, if it worked out that way. So it did. So, yeah. So if you're going to place an order at Artist Tree, you just say you're going to show up as early as you can, even if you're not, because they're going to save it to the end of the day anyways, and they won't give your stuff away. So, a little trick. Don't be honest and say you're not going to show up till 5. Like, honey, what can we show up? I want to show up later. We'll tell them later, huh? No, just say you're going to show up as early as possible so you don't lose what you're trying to get. Okay? So, shout out to Local Artistry. Shout out to um, Bobby. Shout out to the lady who helped me. Um... You know, what I always th- said about these places like Artist Tree when I was in the Bay Area or I go to Vegas. Vegas is amazing, by the way. Everything in Vegas is awesome. The, the problem is I've had so much bad service here in Fresno on certain situations. I don't know if I did the Buffalo Wild Wing one. It was fucking the terrible. Buffalo Wild Wing is the worst service I've ever had in my fucking life. Um, but Vegas is not, everything's nice. The, the you know, there might granted you walk down the street. There's homeless people. You might fall, walk over a dead person that might be homeless. There's drunk people. There's sluts. There's half naked people. But the service is great. You know what I mean, but that's just life. It's no. It's like the internet on the street. That's the life. That's life. You know what I mean, some guy fucking yelling about God next to a girl who's only wearing feathers next to a couple who's looking at a fountain. Next to a guy who's homeless and passed out drunk. Next to a guy pissing on a homeless guy home, drunk. But the service is great. Fuck, the service here is shitty. But, and every time I go to these places like Artistry and out of town, you know, uh, uh, especially the Bay Area, um, it's always amazing. That's the whole thing. Like, the, the guys and girls are always hip and cool. And then, sure enough, this chick um, uh, I, is inappropriate. Take that back. This lady at this place was very hip and cool and uh really appreciated uh the way they treated me that's what uh, you know really comes down to so uh end it with that uh, man yawn late night gotta go back to work um i recommended that i got transitioned from the apprentice and i did and then they Gave her 5 out of 10 on her review. Um, She thought she was a 9. She's all at least could have gave me an 8. And her boss was like, bro, you lucky I give you a 5? And she's like, fuck you. I was like, okay, well. Anyways, what are you going to do? But yeah, go back to work. Work is working good. Weather's good. Driving's been good. I just brought home my son a truck. We got him a truck. Uh, 1990 F-150 with a camper shell. It looks like um, Science of the Ra- Lime, uh, Lambs rape van. Like, it's parked out in front of my house. People probably think it's abandoned and definitely going to steal your children. Definitely, if it looks like. So, we got to do some upkeep on it to make it look a little better than what it is now. But, uh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Uh, things are going better. I, I, I got this great comedy bits I'm really working on. I've been doing so. Um, the one kind of talk about the 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 black aggression. It's kind of one of them a little bit, but uh, I need to start doing some more stand up out there. So I'm still looking for people who need opening acts. Um, I'll head out with you. I take a low pay. Just need to do opening acts with you guys. So, 
Anyways, I am Ruben from Lion and the Truth. Another great episode. Like, share, subscribe. And uh, now have primary control of vehicle function. Discovery Houston, press to ATO.